Okay, welcome back. Right now, I'm very excited and thrilled to say that because I was thinking that we have done lots of cool stuff. We defined a model, we implemented that model in Stan, and also we just checked for the convergence and we checked for the projective power of the model that we had. But now, let's, a click, let's take a closer look at, let's say, the model itself. The model that we created in, I should say, in the Bayesian context, it was called Model A. And you see that when we just run that model, we have, I should say, for example, we have the inferences for the alpha, beta, and gamma of the model that we have. We have our best estimates from this model. You see that, but for the parameters that we had, if I just go back to, let's say, the whiteboard that we defined, uh, these parameters there, you notice that we said that the parameters is alpha, beta, and gamma. And you remember that in order to and sigma, sorry, and you remember we said that for the alpha and the beta, the thing that we had, I should say, as I also defined it here, we said that for the A, which is going to be the slope, we defined it with the parameter beta, and for the intercepts, we defined it with the parameter alpha. And you see that, and you see that the thing which we have defined there, it's defined by, let's say, by the mean on these ones then that's the thing which I also talked about that before. And that's the thing we see that, for example, the inference that we have and the best estimates for these parameters, it comes under the, I should say, under uh, the column, which is called mean. And that's why we just get the mean. Then we said that for the alpha, which as you can see from this model, represents the B, which is going to be the intercepts of our linear model, and also beta which represents, I should say, the A, which is going to be the slope of our linear model. In this model here, we see that the value, which is going to be our best estimates in the stand model, in the probabilistic model, is going to be, I should say, at these values. 5.78 for the alpha, 0 0.29 for the beta, and for the sigma, we have 0 0.49. Okay. Look at these ones. That's the thing that we just got that. And also, you can just come here with the model that we had. We can just also, we can just write another one. We can write, let's say, the model A. We print it and we get the same thing. And also, as what we have done with the non-Bayesian, one of the most popular, I should say, commands, it's going to be the summary. Then you see that when you run the summary, you get essentially the same thing. And you have, I should say, different intervals. And you see that the 95, 97.5 also, it's going to be below there. But now, at this stage that we are, we are just going to have a very interesting discussion right now to see that the method that we just implemented here, and it was with the stand, and it was with Bayesian method, a probabilistic one, how it differs from the model that we originally, from the beginning of our model that we created. I noticed that here we just also called it model A. Let me just call that model uh, non-Bayesian. Let me call this one with the GLM model that we had. You remember the thing which we did, we just go ahead with the summary that we have. In the summary, I have the model non-Bayesian. If I implement that line, you see that the inferences which I get about the estimates which is going to be derived from the ordeal least scores the thing that we talked about that one of the optimizations method that we have for the regression analysis we get the estimates for the intercepts which is going to be 25 and for the x which is going to be 0 0.28 uh, uh, 2 point, uh, 0 0.2872 and you see that we have somehow a similar i should say we have somehow a similar representation of, uh, I should say, of the method that we had, either from the Bayesian and the non-Bayesian. Essentially, we have somehow very close ones in terms of uh, the estimates that we're going to have for our parameters. But somehow the main differences comes essentially when we talk about, let's say, the credible intervals, the thing that we assign the probability that we say that there is a probability that the parameter of our interest just falls within that interval. 
And that's the thing which I have discussed about that extensively in the other course which I have on uh, on, uh, on the site. And I hope that you also check that one there. But because we are not just going to go there to that direction right now, I we plan to do something different. We just uh, stop there and we just go to do some plotting of the thing that we have had. You remember the x represented the weight and also y represented the height. We saw that, okay, we can just plot these functions like that. Also, previously, you saw that the AB line that we could just plot it, it was essentially from, let's say, from the model, which we call that, it was non-Bayesian, and we could come also with the other method, and we say that the color is going to be, let's say, for example, red. And we say that, for example, we can say that LTY, for example, goes to, for example, 1. We saw that previously that this plot is going to be somehow like that. I'm just going to also give it a name. And the name which I'm just going to give, it's going to be, let's say, for example, the non-Bayesian fit. Okay, I'm just going to execute the line. Let me, let me erase this. We do that once more with the plots and for the AB line. And it's surprising I do not have the name, name of it there. Okay, no worries. We can just come over there. And also when we talk about, I should say, uh, the, uh, the, the non-Bayesian, we can just change the colors in order to just distinguish it from the non-Bayesian that we have. Okay, but however, before we do, I'm just going to go ahead and also plot the non-Bayesians that we had. In order to do that, I'm just going to go ahead and check the thing which we have done. I'm just going to go ahead and just choose the par, as you remember, MF row. Okay, at this stage, I'm just going to combine, I should say, two plots in one, I should say, uh, play uh, one page. Then I just go ahead, I plot this one. Let me erase everything there. Let's go with the par. Then I'm just going to plot X and Y. Okay, I have it there. And I have also, this one is plotted there. And now also, in order to do the same thing with, with the non-Bayesian, I'm just going to go ahead and do this one like that to say that the AB line is going to be, I should say, right now we do not just do the model. I'm just going to go ahead as to take the mean of our posterior, which we have had for the posteriors. I should say right now, I just go with the alpha and also go ahead with the other one, which is going to be the mean. I should say it's going to be for the posterior of, let's say, of the beta and also I'm just going to go ahead for the call I said that the color this one is going to I'm going to define it to be as blue let's execute the line but you see that when we execute the line from these two plots let's let's raise this let's do that one by one okay maybe that's going to be better this is going to be, I should say, the one which is going to be for, I should say, the non-Bayesian that we had. And also, the other one which I do, i just going to go ahead with, I should say, with the one which, I, the estimates which I had from the Bayesian methods, which we did that, I should say, in the couple of tutorials before that. Then you will see that in terms of also the plotting, we get essentially somehow a closer fit that we expected. But essentially, one of the good differences that we can think of, I should say, the non-Bayesian, it's the time that we just want to essentially just, I should say, the plot, the uncertainty of, I should say, of, uh, 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 let's say, for example, the inference that we have for the best estimates in our model, which is going to be, I should say, in the next tutorials. Then when we come back, I'm just going to go ahead with the AB line method that we have. Also, I just plot the uncertainty and the, I should say the confidence level that we have in the plots that we had in the next tutorial then. Then as I said always, I can't wait to see you on the next tutorial. Then see you next.